What is up, weather enthusiasts? I'm your host, Pat's Path Predictor. Let's get right into the weather. All right, so here's the situation we have for you, ladies and gentlemen. The NHC has once again tagged another area of interest in the Caribbean Sea. It's November 19th, and we're still getting AOIs. Hurricane season is still not over yet, and... Each time we take a break here on the Pat's Path Predictor channel, the NHC tags another area of interest for us to cover and for us to report on. So with that being said, we're going to go ahead and get right into it. Here's the situation we have right here. Right now, it's a 10-10% chance of development in the next 48 and 7 days, respectively, at this current point in time. Here's the cliff notes that have been released by the National Hurricane Center. A small area of low pressure located just offshore of the northern coast of South America is producing an area of disorganized showers and thunderstorms. Proximity to nearby air, dry air near uh, by dry air is likely to prevent significant development of the system as it begins to drift slowly westward over the Caribbean Sea over the next few days. Formation chance in the next 48 hours once again is 10 percent and 7 percent 70 uh, sorry 10 percent chance of formation in the next seven days. So. My first question, understandably, is to the NHC, if dry air is likely to prevent significant development, why the hell did you designate this an invest in the first place? Now, I was a bit perplexed by this, but I decided to look at some of the conditions that they're potentially looking at at this current point in time, and the conditions are not as t really that terrible for tropical development at this current point in time. The only thing, two things that are really going to be stopping it, in my opinion, are potentially the dry air, as well as how much time it has before it gets to Central America. So we're going to go ahead and really pull up these conditions real quickly. If we go ahead and show you the global sea temperatures, still 29 to 30 degrees Celsius waters all across the Central and Western uh, Caribbean Sea, uh, or about 84 to 86 degrees Fahrenheit for those of you who live in the United States and Puerto Rico and don't understand the metric system. That's okay. It took me a while or uh, two. But anyway, yeah, still extremely warm water across much of the Caribbean and even in parts of the southern Gulf of Mexico, as well as much of the main development region as well, which that's particularly concerning for me because... Based off of what I've been seeing, pretty much all season, we had record high global sea temperatures, and since we didn't really have that much happening in the Caribbean Sea in particular, it still remains a very untapped area, even in late November at this current point. And my concern is, is not that this thing's going to develop or anything like that. My concern is, as I've been saying in the last few videos, is... Let's say 2024 comes around. Let's say the waters remain around 28 degrees Celsius or about 82 degrees Fahrenheit in the Caribbean Sea. And then come springtime, the waters start to warm up again. And since the El Nino is likely to subside by that point, turn into either a neutral or La Nina pos uh, positioning situation with the Enso going on off the coast of Peru, then you're going to have a, a weaker wind shear pattern across parts of the Caribbean Sea, as well as other parts of the Atlantic Ocean, and you're going to have less dry air to really counteract the stuff that's going to be going on. And my main concern is going on into 2024, we see a very explosive season, particularly in the Caribbean Sea, where it takes one system to get into extremely good conditions and then explode in intensity. That's the main concern I have going into 2024 is if these waters do not cool down and what hurricanes typically do is whenever they develop and whether they strengthen all the rain and all the upwelling they generate, they cool down these uh, these waters. And since we're not really going to be seeing that at any, any point uh, at this point, unless this thing happens to develop at the last second is, is that, you know, it just doesn't it just doesn't look good for 2024 and that's all i'm going to say going into this and if we go ahead and show you the wind shear the wind shear where this tropical system is at this current point in time it's the one area in the in the atlantic ocean that actually has low wind shear so i can kind of understand why the nhc is tagging this as an aoi because there is favorable waters with ohc exceeding 150 ohc which that's a lot of energy for those of you who do not know 100 ohc is considered enough for rapid intensification Anything more than that, like maybe 150 OHC is enough for explosive intensification. And anything more than that, yeah, it's not going to be a pretty picture right there. But anyway, the wind shear here where this system is right now, it's around 10, 15 knots max. 
So overall, it's not particularly th that bad when it comes to tropical development. And like I said before, I can kind of understand why the NHC tagged this as an area of interest because there's very warm water and there's low wind shear to suffice with that. In fact, the Caribbean Sea is the only part of the Atlantic Ocean that has low wind shear that can support tropical development. So this is definitely something we need to pay attention to going into this. Now we're going to go ahead and show you some operational ensemble, all those other models that we've been showing you all season long. We're going to start with the European because the European is showing a potential, a couple of potential low pressure signs going on. Like 24 hours out, they're showing some potential for a pressure gradient to start develop, uh, developing. However, it's expected to remain mainly disorganized as it approaches Central America, but still there is n enough of a threat to cause some heavy rainfall for Nicaragua and Honduras for those of you who are tuning in over there. So that's something, something to pay attention to. But the two main things I want to take a look at now is the shear forecast and the moisture forecast. Because the shear forecast, we all know the shear is weak at this current point, but what's the shear going to be like in 24 hours? Well, in 24 hours, the wind shear is expected to be, remain very weak across much of the Caribbean Sea and even into the southern part of the main development region over here. And there is going to be an increase of shear near Panama and Costa Rica. However, that shouldn't really impact the system. And the, that shear is anticipated uh, to kind of hold off over here. And it's in this pocket of low wind shear that uh, that really isn't like that really just, in my opinion, looks to me like it's the last chance of tropical development if it does happen. You can see that vorticity on the shear forecast right there, and that extremely powerful shear is far enough away to potentially help enhance the outflow if it does start tropical develop, uh, tropically developing at this current point in time. And if, you t and if you take a look at it, just how shear works is if it's over the system, it's going to disrupt the system, disrupt the flow. It's going to disrupt the rotation and tear it apart, especially if it's as strong as like 80 knots in some of these areas. However, if the shear is a, a far away enough away where the outflow ca gets caught into it. It helps enhance the rotation and it really helps uh, intensify this, uh, uh, the system if it continues to go on for long enough. But the shear is expected to remain relatively weak pretty much through the next five days as this thing approaches Nicaragua and brings lots of flash flooding. And then the wind shear finally starts to cave in and bring uh, pretty much the Caribbean Sea to its either to its last legs. But hold on, we're not going anywhere. There is one last burst of low wind shear before things start to ramp up as we go into December, about 240 hours out. So that's the shear forecast. Next thing I want to go ahead and take a look at is the moisture component because there is something, this is a pretty interesting situation to take a look at. Where this system is right now, it's about right here where my cursor is pointing at with all those coordinates. There is dry air to the west of it that's definitely going to be intruding into it. The big question is, is that dry air going to stay there or is that going to move? And based off what I'm seeing, the air, the conditions do look a lot more unfavorable, at least after about 72 hours out. And then things start to get a little bit more moderately moist as this, the kind of the, tr the tr it starts trekking towards Central America. However, there is still going to be a bunch of dry air surrounding it, and that's really what's going to make or break the system because. If it can develop in spite of this dry air, and the dry air can stay out of the system. In fact, I want to go ahead and kind of uh, take a look at the water vapor. The, where this all this this whole black area, yeah, that is dry air right there. If it can stay out of the core of the system, if it does develop a, a convective core to it, then it's going to be fair game for tropical development as there's low wind shear and plenty of warm water to do it. However, if it penetrates the core and it ends up uh, just disrupting the whole system, most likely not going to happen. So that's really bringing up my main point. Like, why did the NHC really tag this? I don't quite understand why they did. I kind of do because the warm water and the low wind shear, but there's so much dry air in, in the Caribbean Sea right now that one bad step from the system, and it's going to kill it off completely. So that's the situation that we have going on with the European model. And we'll go ahead and show you some other models to kind of give you a better understanding of what the rest of them are looking at. Because what we have is the European. We have a potential sign of organization and potentially a little bit of development. However, from what I am seeing so far, 
it doesn't look uh, the uh, like it's going to have the best chance of tropical development, but we will keep an up you updated on it in case things do change. Now we're going to go ahead and show you the GFS model, and the GFS is showing something similar to that of the European, showing a little bit of, an, of signs of organization about 24 hours out before it's before the dry air starts to intrude and kind of uh, disrupt the system a bit as it approaches Honduras and Nicaragua as a uh, as a low pressure system bringing heavy rains and potential landslides to the area over there so that's what we have going on from the GFS model the next thing we're showing you is the CMC model CMC has been a pretty interesting model to say at the very least the CMC is actually showing some more signs of organization and development going on as it approaches Nicaragua and, and Honduras over there. However, as it approaches Central America, looks like the dry air is really going to intrude in it and really kill uh, off any chance of it developing at this current point in time. It's really a main th uh, the main theme throughout all of this is, is that just, you know there's not very uh, there's not very much going to, going to be happening. So. That's what we have going on with the CMC. The nav gem showing signs of organization and development, but really not that much going on after about four days out as the dry air really starts to take hold and a lot of stuff uh, really starts to kind of go against this whole system. So that's what we have going on with the nav gem. Last model we're going to go ahead and show you here is the icon. And the icon model has been pretty interesting this whole hurricane season. Not really showing that much organization and development. However, it is bringing very heavy rains to Nicaragua, to Honduras, causing a potentially large flash flooding area all across that area, uh, all across the, uh, the con those countries over there, particularly in the mountainous areas, which is why I'm particularly concerned because this thing is going to be approaching Central America and this thing really is going to be uh, showing signs of that organiz not organization development but really potentially signs of flash flooding mudslides and potentially going to kill some people so that's why we're really covering this and that's why I'm going to keep you updated on this as more information continues to progress. Uh, and one last thing I really want to kind of uh, point out with all this is the NHC, this November has been very trigger happy from what I've noticed. They were very trigger happy earlier in the month when they were showing another area of interest tagged. I think that was Invest 97L. And then they were very trigger happy with 98L and then going on to name it Potential Tropical Cyclone 22, which absolutely got murdered by the, another low pressure system as it approached uh, Haiti and the Dominican Republic. And now they're kind of trigger happy with this. So my opinion here is... Take it with a massive grain of salt. Odds are there's not going to be that much happening, at least for the rest of the hurricane season. But watch out for 2024, and we'll keep you updated on the situation as more information continues to come out. And we will continue to report this, as well as other tropical development that's going on in other parts of the world. But with that being said, we're closing the video out right here. I hope you enjoyed it. Leave a like, subscribe to the channel if you are new. Helps us out, helps us make more videos like these. The goal of this channel is to get more people engaged with weather. And with that being said, have a wonderful day, guys. Stay safe.